Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Caden Cleveland here with the Oklahoma Senate, and uh, you are joining us for another episode of OK Senate Sit Down. Uh, this week we have a very special guest uh, with us this week, Senator Frank Simpson. Uh, Senator Simpson is the chair of our Veterans Committee here in the Senate. Uh, so this week, Senator, we're going to be talking about a few veteran-related topics, uh, seeing what you have planned for this upcoming session. Does that sound good? Sounds great to me. Awesome. Well, here we go. Hang on tight, guys, and we will be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back. And uh, as I mentioned before, we are joined with Senator Frank Simpson, who is our the chair of our Veterans Committee here in the Senate. Uh, now, Senator, just to give uh, everybody at home kind of some background information on uh, you being the chair of our Veterans Committee, uh, how did that come about? I mean, do you have a do you have a history in in military, or you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure, uh, I had the the great opportunity to join the United States Navy when I was still in my senior year of high school in delayed entry program, and uh, and my goal was to uh, go into the Navy, learn to trade, spend a few years in the Navy, get out, and you know let life go right. its merry way. Uh, I enjoyed it so much that I decided to re-enlist and ended up re-enlisting again. Ended up uh, applying for a commissioning program and got commissioned to warrant officer in the United States Navy. Ended up serving 26 years of active duty and uh, enjoyed every minute of it. So it sounds so it's something that just started out being to kind of just be a few extra years turned into 20 plus years, and now they're, you're the chair of a veterans committee in the Oklahoma Senate. I don't think that's really where you planned on starting, is it? Well, <laughs> getting into politics was never in my, my game plan. It really? just, okay. sort of, just sort of came out of the blue. And, and like most of, of my colleagues, too, it's not like you, you know, one day you start planning a goal to, mm -hmm. to someday be in politics. It just sometimes just sort of happens, right. which it did for me. It was a tremendous opportunity to come and serve the great people of southern Oklahoma. And based upon my military background in the Navy, I think it was just natural that I would somehow end up working with veterans in Oklahoma. So you have a background in all, all sorts of veterans-related, uh, uh, I guess, topics and different experiences that you've been through. Uh, and now that you're the chair of our Veterans Committee, which you have been the chair the last few years, correct? Correct. The yeah. last six years. Gotcha. One of the main topics that you had to kind of really uh, tackle last year was the new facility I guess with the Tallahima uh, uh, Veterans Facility that, that uh, I guess went down last year. Sure. Tell us a little bit about that if you don't mind. Okay, some of the, to sort of give you some history on that, okay. uh, when, I, when I came, was elected in 2010, started in the 2011 session, had the privilege of being the Vice Chair of Veteran Military Affairs and, and uh, uh, got to looking around and uh, not to discredit anyone, but I just sort of noticed there were a lot of things in veteran services and in care that probably hadn't received the attention over the years in Oklahoma that it should have. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that came from sort of my unique perspective of being a veteran myself and understanding what our expectations should be when it comes to meeting the needs of our veterans. Right. And, I, and we were falling short in a lot of areas. We were having a lot of problems in our veteran centers, did a very extensive interim study at, back in, in the summer of 2012 which really led to some landmark legislation when it came to veterans' issues in Oklahoma. Uh, to bring us forward now to, to the last couple of years, uh, a lot of our veterans' centers are aging, becoming uh, outdated, and providing a level of service that I think we should be providing for our veterans. And in fact, uh, two of our centers, Clinton and Tallahena, were actually never intended to be veteran centers, but were old tuberculosis sanitariums that were uh, vacated and empty, and the state put them to, to use to become veteran centers. But very limited living conditions. Living conditions weren't uh, what I thought were adequate for our veterans. And we started looking at uh, the expense in operating these outdated centers, which are, are you know, approaching 100 years in age, right. very expensive to maintain, and the location of some of those two, the location wasn't beneficial to, uh, for easy access to veterans' families. Uh, our primary target after many, many meetings with the Department of Veterans Affairs was the Tallahena Center, and we started working on a plan to, uh, to relocate the Tallahena Center mm -hmm. to a location that was more accessible by family members and was able to attract a, a, an employee base, which was very lacking in its current location, gotcha. to be isolated from many small communities. 
And, and we discovered uh, in the current location, there's a, a, an employee base of about 19,000. Uh, by going 40 miles north, we increased that to about 120,000. Really? Because of the, the increase in population. So it makes it easier at a new location mm -hmm. to attract quality employees, and it's easy to to be easier for family members to access to visit their loved ones gotcha. also. So in the, what, where is the, the new facility is in? Which town again? Uh, in, it's in Salisaw. And Salisaw, we, we, gotcha. uh, we made a couple of attempts to, uh, to relocate to Alahena, and, and honestly, the first attempt was probably a little bit too political, mm -hmm. and, and, and we didn't get get the result that we had hoped, and then uh, we, we, we drafted a new game plan. We took all the politics out of it, uh, which is hard to do, right. uh, and and we put the responsibility on the Oklahoma Veterans Commission, which are nine members that oversee the operation of the Department of mm -hmm. Veterans Affairs. We gave them the authority and gave them the responsibility of deciding where we moved that to. Okay. So we, in essence, took the politics out of right. the situation and let the veterans themselves decide where we want to locate a veterans center, and Salisaw uh, was, was the choice. Uh, several communities applied Salisaw offered a very very attractive package to relocate to Salisaw. Man, it sounds like because that, that that's a great solution to to be able to take care of veterans there is it actually put the, put it in the hands of the veterans let Correct. them decide Absolutely. how how to go about that and you know, what location is going to be best moving past the new new facility I guess moving looking into this upcoming session uh, is there any big veterans topics that you're really focusing on and or you, that your committee is, is going to be looking at? Well, there are a couple of things that are in the early stages. One is we are we have applied to the Department of Veterans Affairs mm -hmm. uh, to establish a veterans cemetery in Ardmore. Uh, mm -hmm. There is some excess land that is owned by ODVA in the Ardmore area. And we have uh, we had several meetings with citizens in the area, some town hall meetings, some uh, meetings with local officials, mm -hmm. tremendous support from the local community. And we are in the process, we have applied or are being considered for a state-operated veteran cemetery right. in Ardmore, Oklahoma. Uh, secondly, uh, the Ardmore Veterans Center, which uh, the original building was the old Civil War Confederate uh, veterans uh, uh, home, which is just the administrative offices mm -hmm. now. But the, the resident wings are beginning to show their age and are becoming extremely expensive to maintain. So we are, are in the very early stages of, of, of planning for a new veterans center in Ardmore uh, to serve the uh, veterans of Southern Oklahoma. Okay, well, uh, as far as on the, on the veterans uh, side of things, it, it seems like, you one, you have tons of experience to come along with uh, your chairship, your chairmanship, where, where you guys are going to be moving forward and focusing on. Um, outside of the veterans topic, uh, you are also the subcommittee chair of our Health and Human Services. Is that correct? That's correct. That's okay. a new responsibility that I took over. A, a pro, pro Tem Tree came to me back in August. and. And we sat down and he discussed that and he asked me if I would take over as chairman of the subcommittee for appropriation for health and human services. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I thought about it. It's a tremendous opportunity. And, and you know, when you're my age, when new opportunities come up, you better take advantage <laughs> of them because there aren't a lot of them left out there. Right. So I, I saw it as a new challenge. And, and I, awesome. I, I, like a, I like a challenge. Uh, there is a learning curve I'm working on, but I'm really, really uh, excited about being involved in a committee that directly affects the lives of so many people, children, our seniors, those with special needs. And this is a, a committee that can directly possibly impact the lives of those those constituents. Yeah, that's amazing. So, okay, well, we're about out of time, but is there anything else you wanted to add before we sign off? Well, uh, I think it's going to be a great session. It may be a tough session. The last few sessions, there weren't many fights because there was no money to fight over. But now that we have money, we may have some battles this session. Yeah. It's a different kind of fighting going it on. Is, it is. It's, all, it's all going to come out for, for, for better. For right. I'm, I'm excited about it. And I, I think the overall atmosphere of it is very positive as we move into session. Uh, it just seems like a different uh, different momentum going into this session. Oh, I agree. And, you know, we've got a freshman class coming in. And I've looked at their resumes. We've got a very impressive freshman class coming in. I think they're going to be so. a tremendous asset to uh, to the state senate. You know, a very good freshman class. A very diverse very freshman diverse. class. Very diverse backgrounds. Uh, everything from education, business owners, uh, different 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 areas of expertise that I'm really looking forward to having I, here in the Senate. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Well, um, unless you have anything else, uh, I think we're about out of time. But uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. Uh, I hope you may have been able to little bit, learn a little bit about everything that Senator Simpson has going on as we move into a session, uh, all the stuff that he does to be able to uh, work for our veterans, and we all know how important that is for uh, for everybody, whether in the military or not. Just how important of a of a topic and of a um, I guess of a committee that you are the chair of. So thank you very much. Well, for, thank you. For it's been a pleasure. That. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. And uh, guys, you can always view our videos. They are uh, available at, at protem.oksenate.gov. All of our 
pro tip media information and videos, articles, uh, graphics are all available there. So take a look at that if you want to look at some more of our videos. And uh, I guess that's about it. So we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.